which uh, one of which we are going to watch it uh, this afternoon to good and uh, today. Uh, Dr. Norman is going uh, to historical time. So he will be uh, talking about um, the genre in Malaysian, uh, Malay or Malaysian cinema. And his title is Historicizing Malaysian Cinema Through Genre. And um, before I give the floor to Dr. Norman, I would also like to introduce our discussant of the film, who is an artist, Ao Sao Yi. Uh, uh, she's now living in Taiwan, but she's from Malaysia. And Sao Yi is uh, uh, a visual artist working on a lot of things. And maybe uh, later, although she's uh, doing a comment uh, on Dr. Norman's work, but she's also sharing some of her tips because she is also working on um, the history of Malaysian cinema during the 50s and 60s. I think they have a lot of uh, interesting comments and there must be a lot of uh, discussion coming up later. Um, so uh, without further ado, let me give you Dr. Norman yourself.
Van der Heide recognizes the significance of waters regarding them as sites where cultural forces intermingle <clears throat> rather than conceiving of them as rigid lines of separation between cultures. However, he asserts that this fluid model of boundaries runs counter to conventional notions of genre that emphasize national origins of style. This view the case, Van der Heide does not consider the poss possibility of drawing on more expensive notions of genres that are more dynamic and flexible in order to further examine the cultural, aesthetic, and aesthetic fluidity of non-American film genres. In light of the above, so this paper claims that genre emerged during the early phase of Malaysian cinema, but even during its golden age in the 1950s and 1960s, and aims to trace the prehistories and roots of Malay film genres and to provide evidence regarding which generic categories have been employed in the production marketing strategies of films, for example, in posters, flyers, magazines, and advertisements, as well as in the critical reception. So um, my purpose for discussing this unique use of genre in all Malay cinema is twofold. First, I highlight the prototype of Malay film genres. Uh, it's called Purba films, the type of period films of costume drama that has that has roots in technical form, that's in Bangsawan and Sandiwara and folk literature. Um, therefore, I argue that early Malay films transcended the binary between realist and non-realist genres something that is assumed in most Anglo-American film scholarship. Um, second, I suggest that genres of Malay films have had their own conventions, their borrowings and adapting other local, regional and transnational media and cultural forms. In some instances, marketing strategies and critical reception to more globally popular cultural labels and neologisms. For example, terms such as horror and comedy. Um, in addition, the popularity of Hong Kong genre films in British Malaya, as well as global film practices involving South Indian and Filipino film interests uh, in the early phase, contributed to the influencing and shaping of Malay film genres and content. So before going on to illustrate my argument, let me first provide some context for Malay cinema's indigenous kind of prototype of genre, that is Purba films. So this indigenous genre, as described in is reflected in Purba films of Purba Wara. This is some examples of this Purba film, kind of like the costume drama. Epic films based on the Hikayat and set in the pre colonial area and almost always in a kampo, which nostalgically harkens back to and glorifies the Malay world prior to the arrival of the imperialists. The term Purba literally means uh, ancient time. Like the Cantonese opera films of the 1950s, it disappeared due to the migration of personnel, actors, directors, musicians, and technicians, plots, and stylistic elements from theater to film. So the well-known Pura films such as Hang Tua, Putri Gunung Leda, and Raja Brasil appeared in the form of mytho-historical films with melodramatic overtones and adapted from local or regional myth Legends of tales. The protagonists in this film, whether they are legendary heroines or heroes, royal figures or working class characters, are bent upon maintaining the Malay feudal order. Many Purba films often accentuate the theme of conflict between individual desires and collectivist values. So the texts and narratives of Bangsawan, if you want to. to uh, classify uh, between, you know, to distinguish between Bamsawan and uh, Sanwara in the three of uh, The text and narrative of Bamsawan normally revolve around the kings and the palace and includes titles such as Indra Bamsawan, Pandi Semerang, Siti Zubaida, Singapura Dilaga Toda, Sitangga, Bawang Putih, Bawang Merah, just to name a few, all of which have been adapted to screen. So the text and narratives of Sandiwara, um, such as uh, Megat Trawis, Si Bongkok Tanjung Putri, Jebat Nihaka, Lemping Awang Pulang Kedayang, Lela Satria, and Panglima Besi, primarily highlight the proletariats as heroes 
and includes such titles as mentioned just now. Uh, can we
um, showing, oh sorry, showing uh, the nightmare, Dan um, Anu's nightmare. Um, you know, um, it is naturally motivated and um, it is um, a kind of firasat. Um, firasat uh, in English is um, clairvoyance or telepathy. Yeah. So this kind of tropes also uh, uh, normally are invoked in many uh, Malay you know, dramas of the time, very much influenced by Indian as well as Chinese you know, drama of the 50s and 60s. All right. Um, the next one. The next clip. Sawan and Purbawara were used to refer to Purba films. Um, some examples taken from uh, the flyers, uh, advertisement, as well as uh, film magazines in the 60s, 50s, and 60s, where Yati Mustafa is uh, billed as uh, Bang Sawan, and this uh, second one. Um, one perkasa and the third one is Lampung Karam both uh, considered a Purba and then the, um, most of the Purba films content and narratives were derived from regional and local folk tales passed down orally these folk tales items became known as Malay folk tales or Malay folk literature and consists of overlapping categories such as Charita Lipurlar, Bardi Tales, Animal Fables, Kisah Teladan, Exemplary Stories, Humorous Stories, Jenaka, Myth and Legends. Lipurlara stories often about a princess and her prince abound with magical elements. For example, uh, normally, um, uh, can be uh, witnessed uh, from the hikayats, our ancient epics, hikayat Malim Deman, hikayat Awang Sulong, Merah Muda. And animal fables portray animals that can think and speak like human beings, uh, like hikayat Sang Kanchil. Exemplary stories that often target children contain a didactic message and offer spiritual and cultural lessons. The story's most important lessons appear in the form of poetic justice, espousing notions of good deeds begetting goodness and of evil actions begetting evil. Example of such tales are Bawang Puteh Bawang Mera, The Two Beauties, and Sip Tenggang, Tenggang the Ungrateful Son, as well as Batu Belah Batu Petangko, The Secret Stone, all of which were adapted to silver screen in the 1950s and 60s. Sitanga and Bawang Puteh Bawang Merah together with Batu Belah Batu Petangko represented the archetypal mother figure as an Indian film representing fertility embodied in the primordial image of Earth Mother. Likewise, humorous tales 
such as Pak Pandil, Pak Belalang, Siluncai, Mat Jenin and Musang Jangut convey moral lessons via satire. All of these humorous tales, as evident in P. Ramli's film adaptations such as Nujung Pak Belalang and Musang Berjanggut, ridicule, ridicule not only the common kampung peoples but also traditionally revered peoples such as kings, ministers and religious officials. Myths are stories held to be true. This is screen adaptations uh, of the formation uh, folk literature. <coughs> Myths are stories held to be true and sacred by the people who tell them, be they a nation, a tribe, or a religious community. They are meant to answer the human need, to understand about matters that are outside the limit of the human mind experience. In addition, myths help to orient the basis of our understanding of cosmology and the traditional beliefs of the Malays towards what is powerful in nature. Legends were considered to be true and thus constituted a form of collective history. They narrated the lives of saints and other heroes, emphasizing their extraordinary exploits. Examples of legends include Raja Persium, Singapura di Langa Toda, when Garfish attacked Singapore, and Putri Guru Ledan, Princess of Mount Ledan, which have been adapted into literary, theatrical, and cinematic forms. I'm going to show you another clip. Um, this is um, a big budget epic by Shaw Brothers, uh, the last film produced by Shaw Brothers in Singapore, titled The Fan King or Raja Brazil. Um, adapted one from one of our legends. Legendary. So this is um, made in color, although during those times, uh, films were made black and white, generally made in black and white. Sorry, this uh, copy is without subtitles. So the story is set in the pre-colonial and pre-modern Kedah, the ultimate state of Kedah. So very much uh, closely associated with the Kingdom of Siam. So that's why um, very the representation of the uh, very much entails a kind of cultural hybridity.
explain this repeat with the uh, cheesy special effects by today's standard. <laughs> Mind you. All right. An example of a popular myth and legend in the Malay archipelago or Nusantara is the Puntiana, a fearsome supernatural creature that plays a major part in the Malaysian popular imagination. So as a part of a wider collection of a female ghosts in myth uh, across um, Malaysia, Singapore and Indonesia, the Puntiana is characterized as the ghost of a woman who died in childbirth. The origins of these ghosts are diverse and at times contradictory because um, the myths that feature them were come from a rich tradition that spanned many different regions within the Malay archipelago. Uh, prior to the cinematic representation, the mythic narratives were first adapted into um, Sandiwara a stage uh, or theatrical form by Abdul Razak and then transformed into a screenplay. He adapted the first three of the Puntiana films altogether. During the golden age of Malay cinema, both Katie Chris and Shaw Brothers managed to produce a total of seven Puntiana films. One particularly important form of prose narrative that often highlighted myth and legends was the Hikayat or epic, written between the 14th and 17th centuries. Hikayat generally means narrative prose and story, and more specifically, a narrative genre of the Islamic period. With Arabic and Persian influences. Emanating from court culture, Hikayats reflected the splendor of the Malayan past. Originally, the Hikayats and other folk narratives were recited and performed in open public spaces and on street corners. Eventually, these venues were replaced by the fixed stage as the genre splintered into two forms of drama, the puppet show, the puppet show and the wayang kulit, shadow play. Many centuries later, these dramatic modes of performing hikayats were followed by the Bangsawan, Opera Life, Malayan Theatre, and Sandiwara, the modern Malay theatre, and offshoot of Bangsawan. As literary scholar Muhammad Haji Saleh observes, the genre, the hikayat, in addition to being temporally and culturally hybrid, is extremely wide in its coverage of forms, ages, structures, and elements. A case in point, the most important historical literary text is Hikayat Hang Tua, or the epic of Hang Tua, which features the character Hang Tua, who became an important official at the Malaccan court. Epitomizing all of the qualities of the traditional Malay hero, the text's central part is the conflict between Hang Tua and Hang Jebat with regard to the relationship with the Sultan of Malacca, a complex hybrid narrative that is part fiction and part fact the text cannot be read as an accurate account of the history of Malacca Persa because there are simply too many elements of the fantasy and the paranormal that interrupt throughout the narrative. Furthermore, contemporary readings of Hang Jebat as the modern Malay hero, rebellious against oppression and injustice, and of Hang Tua as the traditional feudal hero, obedient and loyal to the state or system, point toward opposing modes of Malay masculinity which will still remain relevant in modern day Malaysia. In 1956, Shaw's Malay film productions turned Hang Tua into a motion picture directed by Pani Majumdar from India. The film was made in colour, thus making it an adventure epic. Adapted from British writer Mubin Shepherd's The Adventure of Hang Tua, Majumdar's screenplay was also loosely based on the Hikayat Hang Tua and on the Malay annals, Sejarah Melayu. Acknowledging that many details were imaginary, Shepard confined his narrative to some of Hang Tua's major adventures. 